I've been using the Canon EOS 90D for about two weeks now, and I've come to one maybe shocking conclusion. This is actually the best current Canon out there for the online video creator. Now, it has so many upgrades over the old 80D, plus it's easily better as a 4K camera than every other Canon interchangeable lens hybrid device released so far this year, mirrorless or otherwise. The EOS R was released last year. Now, it's not perfect by any means and does have some shocking omissions, but what Canon camera doesn't? So with all of that, why is this currently the best Canon camera? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Right off the bat, I do want to admit a couple of things. First off, this video is not sponsored by Canon in any way. I've never actually talked to anybody from Canon, except once at NAB. This 90D is on loan though from b &H Photo Video, who very generously allowed me to use gear to make videos about, but they don't dictate anything I say in these videos. For example, they also loaned me the G7X Mark III that I still don't think is worth buying. Second thing we need to say up front is I'm also not somebody that uses 24 frames per second. Now, I don't consider myself a filmmaker, which frees me up because I'm not shackled to 24 frames per second, and I just prefer 30 frames per second, which you know, it's fantastic here because the 90D does not have any 24 frames per second options currently on it. Now again, I've been using this camera for a little over two weeks now. I've produced some YouTube videos and some family videos of my own. And in that time frame, I gotta tell you, this camera is amazing. And to show you how amazing it can be, like for this kind of video, let's throw it up on the stick so it can be the B cam to the Z6 for the rest of the video. There we go, and this is now the 90D. So first thing that makes the 90D the best is the physical body itself. Now, stepping back really quickly though, the 90D, it is a DSLR, but it's really a hybrid camera. Yes, it has a mirror, and yes, it has an optical viewfinder. But besides that, the internals, like the insides and the feature set, basically has all of the features of a Canon mirrorless camera. So keep that in mind as we go throughout this video. Back to the body though, this might be my favorite camera body of all time, which is surprising to me and maybe to you because before trying out the 90D, my favorite camera bodies on this planet were the Panasonic GH5 and the Canon EOS R, which the GH5 is still amazing. I mean, don't don't judge me. I, I still love you, GH5. It, it, it might hear. But the 90D might actually take that crown going forward. Like the body is fantastic. And as I use more and more cameras, I've actually started to prefer bigger bodied cameras. Now, nothing as crazy as the 5D Mark IV or the big Nikon DSLRs, but I do like bigger than maybe like a tiny mirrorless camera like an A6000 line. I mean, they're great, but it's easier to use that bigger camera without needing a gimbal or a tripod, and it's just more comfortable to hold. And that's not a small thing. So while I've been out shooting handheld video for this week's set, and I've even started doing some family wedding photography and family photos, now I really prefer the bigger style. And it's just something that it really does well is it makes bigger lenses more manageable. And as lenses are getting faster and faster, that means they need bigger and bigger pieces of glass, which makes the overall experience bigger. So the more comfortable a body is, that's getting very important. Now, not only is the 90D better from a comfort perspective, but the usability wise, the body is amazing too. Now it doesn't have the customization of a Panasonic or a Sony mirrorless camera, but it has enough of the function buttons on it to change whatever settings you want. And because of course we're gonna talk about this, the flip screen makes using a camera while in front of it so easy. I mean, it's almost like deliberately making it harder on yourself by using any other kind of camera, like legitimately. I will no longer purchase cameras without some kind of articulating screen because I just don't have time to baby a camera and I don't really like making Franken rigs. Now I had to make a Franken rig camera setup for the Z6 right now because I really like the image quality, but it has no flip out screen and it has no XLR mic. So I had to build something up and I'm not happy with. I don't like having a bunch of other junk that needs set up when I can just flip the screen around or up. Something else amazing that combines with the flip screen is the Canon's dual pixel autofocus. And I really like Canon's continuous video autofocus. There are two companies right now that I will trust to have autofocus during video, and that's Canon and Sony. Nikon is getting really, really close though with the Z cameras, but it's not quite there yet. Like, it's, it's just not quite there yet. The flip screen and the autofocus on the 90D combine together into a system that just works, and it works with very little input from the creator. Now, while that might sound like easy mode kind of production or like, 
maybe you're not as pro because you're not manually handling everything. Well, yes, that's a good thing. Like I don't have the time, patience, or additional crew to micromanage a camera. If it can't pull its own weight, I can't use it and the 90D basically runs itself and that's praise, like that's a good thing, that's not a bad thing. And you know what, let's quickly hop outside so I can show you how all of this works together in the body. <laughs> okay, and yeah, I did, this is not necessarily a full vlogging test, but I really wanna show you just how easy it is and how important it is to have a camera that just runs itself. Like right now, all I did was I threw on a microphone, I threw on an ND filter, cause it's, you know, starting to get really sunny out here, and we just started creating. I don't have to worry about anything else with this camera. I don't have to worry about my autofocus. The exposure, yeah. The dynamic range on these kind of cameras is not the best. You do kind of have to decide whether you want the highlights or the shadows, but even then, like the camera runs itself. All I have to do is make sure I'm in front of it and it just works. Like I just set it down. I know the autofocus is working because the box around my face. I know the image is gonna be good because I can see the screen. And I know the audio is gonna be good because I can monitor the audio. I can see the levels from the camera right here. And I'm like pretty far away from the camera. And that's the thing, that's the thing and why there's so much hate about Canon. I get it, there are things that Canon cameras do that I wish they had, there's a lot, but I don't fault people for using them. If you have the money and you have the crew and you can use like more manual cameras, you can use cinema cameras, you could use a red camera, you can do stuff like that, that's great. That's great and I'm very happy for you. But for those of us that just stand in front of the camera and give our opinions about things, you, you would be hard pressed to find better cameras then a cannon, and now I'm showing you that, and now we're gonna go back inside because the mosquitoes are, the mosquitoes are the worst, the worst. Back inside. <laughs> now another fantastic thing about the 90D that you might have noticed outdoors is when it records in 4K, there is no additional crop. That's, I love saying that. Yes, it is an APS-C body, so you'll have a 1.5 times crop if you use a full frame lens, but what's wild is that the 1.5 times crop on this is less than the full frame EOS R 1.8 times crop. So this is actually the widest 4K Canon camera you can get for under $2,000, which while great for the 90D, is kind of lame in general for Canon's lineup. I made myself sad there. Plus when recording in 4K, unlike the M50 and the SL3 and the EOS RP, wow, there's seems to be a trend here, uh, you don't lose that amazing dual pixel autofocus that we clamored about earlier in the video. So yes, here is a Canon camera that has both a flip screen, dual pixel autofocus, and a reasonable field of view in 4K. There you go. There you go. Those set of features are why online creators continue to buy Canon cameras. Nothing else in the market, seriously. Nothing else is as easy to use as a Canon camera. And here's a video that I made explaining why even though they never come close to winning in the specs department, Canon is still a great choice for these kind of videos. When it comes to straight up image quality though, I do find the 4K to be a little less sharp than on my EOS R, but that is a much more expensive camera with a higher end sensor inside of it. Plus, I use C-Log on the EOS R, which is a picture profile that's sadly lacking on the 90D. I mean, we've been recording this video in neutral with the contrast turned all the way down and the sharpening turned down two notches. And it's, it's not the image that I would love to have, but it's a totally fine image that I'm willing to work with on a body like this. Like we mentioned in the tips and tricks video, you can always download additional custom picture profiles. And the one I've been using when outdoors the last couple of weeks has been the Technicolor Cinestyle profile because one, it does give you the ability to have a flatter image. It doesn't necessarily give you more dynamic range, but it does give you the ability to match better. And two, because it's free. It's free, use the free one. Now, this isn't a one trick pony though. With a few setting changes, you can turn this from a vlogging camera into a streaming camera, into a talking head camera, into a 32 megapixel monster stills camera. It's, it's like an all in one package. But let's talk back to streaming really quick. Now, I love that the 90D is a DSLR that can have a clean 4K and 1080p image out. Now, why I specifically like that this is a DSLR with that ability is clean HDMI for the longest time was reserved for camcorders and mirrorless cameras, which while great, and I primarily use mirrorless cameras, uh, those tiny bodies really couldn't stand up to being turned on, pulling video through the HDMI port without overheating after a certain amount of time. Now, the 90D with that big old body has no problem streaming for many, many hours at a time, which is something I've already put to the test with my own WoW Classic live streams. Having the ability to have a huge sensor, I mean, compared to traditional webcams or camcorders, camera with great autofocus, clean HDMI, huge battery, 
the ability to use EF glass, I mean, basically makes the 90D probably one of the best streaming cameras ever made, If unless you wanna go up to like actual pro, like broadcast production level cameras, the 90D is a very compelling streaming camera. And while we talk about the other capabilities of the 90D, I do wanna make sure to take this moment to mention one of my absolute favorite features of the 90D, and I get it that this is a nerdy thing to be excited about, but this has mini HDMI. Now, that mini sounds small, right? It's actually the middle ground for HDMI connections, and it's so much more useful. I typed that in all caps in the scripts to emphasize that point. It's so much more useful than micro HDMI. Look, camera companies, if you're watching, some of you do. Panasonic, you're good here. You guys can, you already good. Don't, don't worry about it. Stop using micro HDMI connections. Let's just all agree and consider it a dead connection because it's awful. And let's use mini as the bare minimum. Extra points for full though. Back to speaking of that mount though, the 90D continues to have Canon's EF mount, which while not surprising or innovative at this point, I mean, it gives you the ability to have access to one of the most used, versatile, and widely available lens systems on the planet. You can buy crazy affordable glass here for cheaper than just about any other mount, and if you go to Canon's refurbished website, you can find it for even cheaper. That comes included with Canon's warranties. But heck, I mean, even if you don't wanna use Canon's website and you wanna buy it from a reputable camera store that you already use, you can always find high quality glass used there anywhere. And remember, you can even use this with the ever popular 18 to 35 Sigma 1.8 zoom with no adapters, tricks, or prayers needed. There's not a lot of other cameras out there that can say the same thing. I mean, heck, there are more little things that I could mention to pad the length of this video, but back to the beginning, this is the best Canon camera for the online content creator I mean, ever made. It takes all of the problems from Canon's other cameras and makes it better. Better stabilization than the USR. Less of a 4K crop than the USR. You've actually got autofocus in 4K, unlike the M50, RP, and SL3. It's got 4K unlike the 80D. Now, it's, again, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Missing 24 frames per second and missing the all-eye compression really sucks. But if you don't use those, and a heck of a lot of online creators never ever touch those settings, then this is a fantastic, fantastic camera that I've had a heck of a good time using. And I'm, I'm legitimately impressed by it. I went into these videos thinking that I was just gonna make these, not be impressed by it and say, you know what, whatever. I mean, buy it, I guess, if you want it. But Canon, I think, did a good job here. Please include 24 frames per second in a firmware update and you'll have a smashing success. Thanks for watching.